2006 was a year Farah Noor Ahmed will never forget. It was a year he witnessed hundreds of livestock and human beings lost in a manner he had never seen before. 25-year-old Ahmed, then a student, says a strange disease which he later learned was Rift Valley Fever was what was causing the deaths. It dealt a devastating blow on the lives of pastoralist communities in northeastern part of Kenya. He is glad his life was spared. Iliona machangu, watu ingine wakewa wana bleed. Iliona ngombe hata zikewa zinakufa, ndo nilikuta na hao. So at least, sayi sisi nungisema, munga litu epusha. In mid-2006, several unexplained fatalities associated with fever and generalized bleeding were reported in Garissa, a border town situated in the northeastern part of Kenya. In less than five days, a total of 11 deaths had been reported. Of serum samples collected from the first 19 patients, Rift Valley fever virus was found in samples from 10 patients. All serum specimens were negative for yellow fever, Ebola, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever and dengue viruses. The outbreak was confirmed by isolation of RVF virus from six of the specimens. Yo ugonjwa wakati litoka watu waliambiwa kama gombe ikikufa msikule. Na mtu akikuwa na gonjwa kulikuwa na kulikuwa naenda hospitali kulikuwa nasaidiwa. Eh. Mtu aki akikuwa na hiyo ugonjwa alikuwa anatengeneza mali nyingine akae apumzike kiasi ili hiyo hiyo blood itulie kiasi tunaona hiyo gonjo mitokea hatujinzi tunatumba tunazuia watu tunaambia watu wasikule lakini hiyo kitu kingine hatuwezi waacha ni maziwa manake maziwa tunaweka ndani ya chai tutakula manake wezi kula shirungi eh, au mgonjo baka ishi kiona hii ugonjwa kama ni ile ya sandikio nyama hata sisi tulikuwa tunachoma ama tunachimba ardhi tunatumbukiza tunaregesha mchanga ili asi esikuliwa hata mnyama mwingine sababu ikikula mnyama huwa hiyo mzoga ndio inaanza kutuba huko na huko alafu mnyama mwingine ikuliwe ile nyasi ikitokea the virus was originally isolated in Kenya in 1930 and since then there has been a spread of the disease throughout much of Africa. Worrying is the fact that humans can be infected with RVF virus from bites of mosquitoes and other vectors that have fed on animals infected with RVF virus or through contact with viremic animals, particularly livestock. Reports of livestock deaths and unexplained animal abortions in northeastern province provided further evidence of an RVF outbreak. During t that time there were heavy rains and you saw, you see Jara is a lowland area where most of the water accumulated after rainfall. So there was a, a bloom of uh, house flies, especially mosquitoes, and then this resulted in the, in the, in the, in the disease which went ahead and affected humans and some animal, a lot of animals and some humans died Ulianzia wakati wa mvua mingi mlianzika hiyo nini hiyo ugonjwa wa rifthalia ikiwa imenyeshewa mingi uh, ardhi imefuruka ukifuruka sasa hiyo ina natoka hiyo gonjo kwanza anaanza ngombe na mbusi huwa mbusi mingi kwanza baada ya hiyo mbusi wewe ukikamua kukula nyama yake binadamu inaku Rift Valley fever is a viral zoonotic disease affecting domestic livestock, human and wildlife. It is a vector-borne disease transmitted by specific types of mosquitoes. Rift Valley fever is interesting because it is a novel disease, one that is poorly understood by pastoralists and local-level policy makers because of long periods between outbreaks. 
Given that scenario, the challenges posed by Rift Valley fever to Kenyans are unlike those posed by diseases which both pastoralists and scientists have long been familiar with. There are, however, interesting similarities between mad cow disease, the problem of mad cow disease in Britain and Europe and Rift Valley fever in Kenya and East Africa more generally. Both are diseases about which our scientific knowledge is incomplete and these are also diseases that are difficult to predict and difficult to control and the consequences of their outbreaks are often difficult to predict and difficult to control. It is for this reason that STEPS Centre UK, in partnership with the Centre for African Bioentrepreneurship, a knowledge sharing and learning NGO in Kenya, undertook a three year study in Ijara and Tana River districts in northeastern Kenya, a region that was hard hit by the Rift Valley fever in 2006 and 2007. The study examined the challenges posed to Kenyans by RVF with a view of trying to identify and appraise alternative ways of responding to the challenges of Rift Valley fever. The objectives of the study were three. One, to look at the evolution and the characteristics of policy process in response to this particular disease. But as you know, formulating policy is one thing, implementing policy is a totally another thing. So we also looked at how does the policy play out in terms of implementation? What sort of knowledge is put into consideration? What knowledge is left out? And to what extent are the local people, there is public, if you want to call it public participation, to create awareness so that they reduce the time taken to implement and, the, and also to kind of empower the communities to participate in this decision making, in the design of policy and also in the implementation of policy. And the three was to encourage a conversation because sometimes scientific knowledge emanates from somewhere and relegates indigenous knowledge or knowledge of the people. So we believe that when there is a conversation between different uh, knowledge perspectives and knowledge people, then it may reduce the distance, the, the time taken to implement a, a, a particular decision and may also reduce the cost because we involve people even in the process of prevention and therefore the cost of actual treatment would be much less than otherwise. The empirical focus was on the dynamic relationships between the perspectives of different groups, including government, policymakers, expert advisors, public officials and rural pastoralists. In relation to pastoralists, they also possess some understanding of RVF, such as its emergence following long dry periods followed by rains, means of transmission and some symptoms of RVF including nose bleeding in livestock and people and abortions in livestock, especially the goats. In our study on Rift Valley fever in Kenya and East Africa, the approach we've taken is not just to look at the science, what's known and not known and uncertain about Rift Valley fe fever, but also gather the perspectives of a wide range of different stakeholders, both veterinarians, government officials, local officials, public health officials, and citizens and pastoralists and different groups. And by taking all those different perspectives into account, we're endeavouring to provide an analysis of some ways of more effectively enabling um, Kenya to cope with the challenge, challenges that Rift Valley Fever poses, and we hope that you find our findings useful. When we talk about the Rift Valley Fever, because this is a phenomenon that I witnessed personally when I was deployed in the district in 2006, the community relies heavily on animal products that includes milk and meat to supplement their dietary needs. So you, you find actually that uh, at that time, during the outbreak, uh, the emergency response system was very weak. And at the same time, institutions were not in place to handle that new challenge. So what happened is that uh, 
uh, livestock populations got uh, infected. At the same time, it affected the diet of the people because they had to look for alternative means of supplementing their diet. The majority of pastoralists in Ijara district practice nomadism. On the other hand, communities of sedentary agro-pastoralists located in the Tana River district have mainly come from communities of arable farmers and so have less experience with livestock. They are less informed about RVF than the pastoralists where the Ijara district is. They had scant knowledge of the symptoms of RVF or how to respond to an outbreak. The pastoral systems are characterized by large numbers of animal population, livestock, wildlife, human proximity and interaction, prevalence of the mosquito vectors and biting insects are terrain and in forests. I think most of this interaction is the source of uh, diseases. Because when they meet for water, then they interact. So when the human beings take that water, maybe it will have been infiltrated by these animals, animal feces. So there is need to separate uh, water plants for human use and for, for, for animal use. I think that is the, the biggest challenge we have here. Close collaborations between veterinary services and public health sectors are essential for the effective prevention and control of RVF and other zoonoses. The ministries responsible for livestock and health have been controlling previous outbreaks of RVF in a reactive manner. However, in recent years, a One Health or OH approach has been initiated to manage endemic and emerging epidemics of zoonotic diseases. This is a result of recognition of the need for human, livestock and wildlife experts to work collaboratively in preventing and controlling these diseases. In an OH approach, Kenya established the Zoonotic Disease Unit, or ZDU, a collaboration between the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries, and the Ministry of Public Health for better prevention and control of zoonotic diseases. Uh, the control options that were mitigated, they were initiated by the government after the disease now, now from, from animals, Rift Valley had gone to Nautic and it had affected humans. That's when the government came in and it, it was controlled by the help of the national government and the district veterinary department. Outbreaks of RVF in animals may be prevented or controlled by a sustained program of animal vaccination. Both modified live attenuated virus and inactivated virus vaccines have been developed for veterinary use. Only one dose of the live vaccine is required to provide long-term immunity, but the vaccine that is currently in use may result in spontaneous abortion if given to pregnant livestock, posing a vaccine technological challenge. Lakini to avoid as we health, uh, health workers wanyama wake separate na binadamu wakae mbali na wanyama Livestock provide nomadic pastoralists not just with sources of protein in form of meat they also act as a primary source of monetary income in the event of an officially confirmed outbreak of RVF, the pastoralists not only lose their access to export markets, domestic movement restrictions inhibit their ability to access domestic markets and consequently they incur income losses. During and after the 2006 RVF outbreak, many agencies and local NGO and international invested heavily in training and awareness raising, especially on hygienic slaughtering. Kuna muta veterinary na muta health. Huwa mambo ya afya wao ndio nasimamia. Ukiona kama kuna magonjwa fulani, hao ndio wataangalia. 
kama kama yani hii kitu haiwezi kuulika na binadamu inatupa huko you see and when you open we expose this you can even see if there is some that sort of swollen or sites of injection if the cow was given injection or the animal and then after that you can make incisions first incision you come you start with there this lymph node this prescabula the stabs in ijara were too little to to require and then the 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 community they could not believe if, if this is a rift valley so we were telling them after getting the information this is a rift valley they were saying no we have not heard of raja disease if it is eating we can eat our meat and drink our milk so it was so difficult to educate this. it was so difficult to educate these people so to, so that they can come to realize if this, uh, this is a deadly disease during an outbreak of RVF, close contact with animals, particularly with their body fluids, either directly or via aerosols, has been identified as a most significant risk factor for RVF virus infection. In the absence of specific treatment and an effective human vaccine, raising awareness of the risk factor of RVF infection, as well as the protective measures individuals can take to prevent infection or transmission, is the only way to reduce livestock to human infection and deaths. The loopholes that we have found out from this study are that despite the fact that the pastoralists have been trained on use of protective uh, clothing during slaughter process, some of them are not practically uh, uh, implementing that. And uh, for that reason, it poses a risk to them in the event that the outbreak occurs. For others uh, who are still using milk, uh, the study shows that not all of them are using uh, boiled milk and that exposes them to dangers in the event of Rift Valley fever outbreak. There are several risk factors that predispose RVF infections. For example, in the dry season, grazing area that acts as fallback grazing areas, there are more wildlife than livestock, which predisposes them to high viral multiplication and infections between wildlife and livestock. The wildlife is more resistant than the domestic animals. For example, sheep are more vulnerable than cattle. There are increased interactions between wildlife and animals during the dry period in fallback grazing areas. The grazing areas and watering points are changing. There is also a decrease in water point bodies. There is evidence of increasing RVF risk factors and changing dynamics of the disease ecology such as climate change, effects that have resulted in increased mobility of people, livestock and wild animals. Therefore, communication and collaboration among the veterinary, human and wildlife health communities is crucial in surveillance of zoonotic diseases. Na ikikuja natakiwa bila bado kuja ikipata ujanjo ya kujanja hiyo watu itakuwa faida sana na itakuwa itakoma itasimama It takes a lot of time for us to transfer, to refer our specimen up to Nairobi so if we could be having somewhere like in Garissa that's a bit near and we can get the results very fa very fast Pastoralist production systems show that pastoralists and agro-pastoralists play an important role in responding to RVF outbreaks and in reducing the potential for spread of the disease. But as technical and scientific experts focus more on implementation of officially planned responses such as vaccination of livestock, the role of pastoralists and farmers is muted. The other loophole is in terms of uh, the feedback mechanism of communication between the local level people and 
uh, the other stakeholders because it seems that there is a missing link between these uh, different categories of people in terms of how they communicate information about Rift Valley fever. No, Zapata, Sasa Kama Fitner Hatuna Gari. She does a Gari Piahiko. Nabila Villa Gara to his Vanika Yukazi. Kazabuleo Mafugo Ako Malishoni Kule. On a Kuana Shida, by Ingini Officia Akodawa. Utana Namagana Abdullah Kuna Namna Kuenda Kupega Yodawako. Nayo Dawa in Atumia Nini? In Atumia Ice. Takana Mende Gari, you down is special. So here I couldn't have been a fetnapia. In the challenges of Kwanza Shide to Kwanza Hapa. What is clear from the history of the mad cow disease policy making in Britain and Europe is that it can be extremely difficult to mobilize the resources necessary to address uncertain problems in veterinary livestock and, and human health. But the mad cow disease saga does strongly suggest that early investment can save a great deal of money and harm and tragedy in the long run. The disease presents too many unknowns. There's scientific uh, incompleteness of information as well as policy incompleteness of information. And this lack of knowledge uh, transcends, um, cuts across both uh, local, I mean, professionals even at the local level and also the pastoralists and agro-pastoralists. Agro Two, the, there is a, a problem of resources that uh, when the disease outbreak occurred, there was uh, actually lack of resources to quickly respond uh, to this particular disease. And uh, finally, there have been plans that have been put in place uh, by the contingency plan, but also uh, the opportunities presented by the devolved government. But these are new um, happenings and they require, of course, uh, political will, they require a lot of resources to be able to move them forward. Mm -hmm.